Welcome to the beautiful country of Montenegro. We took a day trip from Dubrovnik, Croatia, which is only about an hour and a half away from Montenegro. Some really interesting facts about this country. It's a very small country and the population is only around 600,000, but they have a massive tourism industry. Over 2 million people a year, not counting the COVID years obviously, over 2 million people a year on average come to visit this country. And after just spending the morning here, we can definitely see why. The natural beauty here is unmatched. They share the coastline on the Adriatic Sea with Croatia, so they have all of that as well. But they also have these really cool inland towns like Kotor. So we're here at the old town of Kotor. This is an ancient city over 2,000 years old. And just like Dubrovnik, it is walled all the way around, which we're very excited about. The medieval vibes are definitely here. It's on the side of these mountains where you can actually see a church. There's a hike that goes all the way up to a church that overlooks everything. So even though Montenegro is not part of the European Union, they have adopted the Euro as their currency. Usually it costs one Euro to enter the old town, but I think we got lucky today because it looks like everyone's just walking right in. We've just entered through Sea Gate. No one was there to collect any money, so score. We don't really know what we're gonna see in the old town. We're just gonna go out and explore, wander around and see what we can find. The Couture Old Town is shaped like a spider web. So really you can pick any street and you'll run into another. So far there's definitely characteristics to this old town that remind us of the Dubrovnik old town. The one big difference is just the location and the setting. You can see behind me these large mountains that kind of just are the perfect backdrop to this old town. In Dubrovnik it's the sea, which is also beautiful. You can't go wrong with either one, but it's very very different and definitely has a completely different feel. So we had a lovely morning on the KOTOR Bay in the city of Parast, but we only had a cappuccino. We didn't get any breakfast, any food, so we're definitely hungry. What's great about KOTOR, they have all of these restaurants that are right in the old town. We're definitely gonna be trying some Balkan cuisine that we've been looking forward to ever since we got to Croatia. No matter what part of the Balkans you're in, you have to try the local olives and cheese. We've had some of the best olives and best cheese we've ever had right here in the Balkans. And we're excited to see how Montenegro's cheese and olive situation is. So here we have some goat cheese. Mm. It's a hard cheese, but once you bite into it, it gives the illusion of a very, very soft, delicate, melt-in-the-mouth cheese. That's lovely. Okay, all in. You cannot beat olives in the Balkans. Now we also have a black squid risotto on the way, which we've heard we absolutely have to try. You can find it anywhere in Croatia, Montenegro, any of these countries. But I wanted to try something a little more traditional to Montenegro itself. So apparently this veal soup is just that. It's delicious, it's just very hot. Oh wow, yeah that veal is really nice. It's honestly like a chicken noodle soup kind of looking broth, but it's, it's veal and carrots, really, really good. So here it is, our first black risotto on the Adriatic coast. We waited way too long for this. Apparently you squeeze a little lemon on top. The dark black color comes from the squid ink, so that's why you're wondering why it's so deep black. I don't know if it turns your teeth black too, we'll find out. Wow, that is really nice. Especially with the lemon on top, those flavors mix so well. I got my first piece of squid. Very good, very fresh. That is nice. When we were in Spain, we did try the paella with the black rice, known as arroz negro. It's kind of like this, except this is risotto, obviously, instead of rice. And there's just a little bit of a different consistency with that. But as far as the flavors of the seafood, the squid ink, very similar. You gotta have the lemon, that's essential. Definitely the one thing to note with the squid ink risotto, the squid ink stains your fingers if you get any on there. I've already gotten a little bit on my thumb. So something to be aware of, but it's so delicious. I don't think you'll care about the stains at all. I can't imagine what my teeth are gonna look like after this. I might look like a pirate. I'm okay with that. It's so delicious. Sid's literally gonna have to wrestle this away from you.
I absolutely love being in this region. Even though we're not technically on the Mediterranean, it's definitely the Mediterranean cuisine with the lighter flavors of the olives, the cheese, the citrus with the lemon, lots of seafood, lots of fish. It's so good, it's so light, and doesn't weigh you down all day, and you can walk in beautiful towns like this right after. There's definitely a slower pace of life here in Couture. You don't really have to have a rigid schedule. This stunning stone church that's set right in the shadow of the mountains is actually one of the oldest churches in the entire world. It's older than Notre Dame in Paris. It's also older than St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Kind of crazy to think about that. It's the centerpiece of the Kotor Old Town. The Old Town is just filled with these narrow curved streets and we're already kind of getting a little mixed up. So we're gonna go on the city walls to get a full panoramic view and get a little bit of a bearing on where we're actually going. The walk on top of the city wall provides an amazing view of the Old Town and the mountains behind it. In order to get there, you just have to go through the main gate, take a left, go all the way down to the stairs. So in Dubrovnik, the city wall is 250 Croatian kuna each, which comes out to a little bit over $30 US. Here in Kotor, absolutely free. It's so cool how KOTOR is tucked as far as you can go within the KOTOR Bay. So a lot of this water is from the Adriatic Sea, but it also mixes with all of the rivers coming from the mountains. What a perfect backdrop. You can definitely tell how being set so far back in this bay was a strategic advantage for all of the settlements that called KOTOR home throughout the years. You had the Dalmatians, the Venetians, a lot of the architecture here is still Venetian, the Serbs, a lot of people were here. So just the fact that it is a walled city, it's a fortress and it's set so far back, it'd be very, very hard to invade. I could definitely spend a whole day here in KOTOR, especially if you had a boat to just kind of take you around the bay. It would be so amazing. But we also want to check out the Montenegrin coast. Is it Montenegrin or Montenegrin? I'm not sure. KOTOR, we were not here long enough. Yeah, we're gonna have to come back, preferably on a boat. Let us know your KOTOR recommendations in the comments below so that next time we can check those out. This year has brought us to so many new and different places. There's a lot of places that we've always wanted to come to. And then there's places that I'd never thought in a million years I'd end up, like Budva, Montenegro. But I'm so glad I'm here because I had no idea this even existed. This is a perfect example of the clash of old and new here in Montenegro. So behind me is the old town. Much like KOTOR, it's a walled city and you can go inside. The design and the architecture of all the buildings is very reminiscent of a different time period. But then the other side of Budva is this brand new casino nightclub haven where all of these rich people are coming with their big yachts and boats. It's just kind of in that transition period where a lot of the buildings are still getting built out, a lot of the new hotels, luxury apartments, but you can see where this is going. They're trying to make it the new Monte Carlo, the new Atlantic City. Atlantic City's probably a bad example, a little bit nicer and more bougie than Atlantic City. It's right on the coast of the Adriatic Sea and it's a perfect place to have something like that. A lot of the Russian oligarchs are here too. You can see a lot of the big boats, a lot of the big money here. As of now, over 50% of the property, especially the coastline property here in Budva, is owned by Russian people. Pretty interesting. <laughs> we can definitely tell why this is a very appealing summer destination if you're wealthy. It's a great place to bring your toys, your new boat, your yacht, your jet ski. You can bring it in right from the sea and go into this town, gamble, stay at a nice luxury hotel. But then you also have the old town here, which I'm kind of fascinated by that. Just the juxtaposition and the contrast between those two things. A lot of these roads here in Montenegro are a little scary because you're pretty much right up on the edge of the coast. And if anything would happen, if there's just a little tilt in the car, you're going over and there's no turning back. It's right up on the edge and that railing's not gonna do anything. The road that enters Budva is so cool because it's so high up on the mountain and you can see over all of the coast. There's a massive beach on the other side and it looked quite crowded to be honest, but it's just this massive acres and acres of beach. And then seeing the topography along the coast is just so amazing. You can tell why a lot of big money is coming here. This is a prime location for what they're trying to build out. There is a little bit of a planning crisis going on with this, especially the new developed part of Budva. 
because they're building so many new roads. They're trying to build all these new hotels and everything, but there's nowhere to park. There's absolutely nowhere to park. And they're not building parking lots or parking structures at all. So a lot of people are, instead of, you know, getting big SUVs or anything like that, they're going towards like the two-seater, really small little cars, because really it's the only way to get around in a manageable way. There's, there's no other option.